So for a drawing like this, the process is kind of split into three different steps. So we start with a with a very rough sketch, you know? I, I start with a circle and then, yeah, it's a circle and you, you put basic shapes on it. All your lines are just kind of loose, you know, loosey-goosey. Try and give it the spaghetti. Um, so nothing is like determined, it's not set in stone. You can play with your shapes, move everything around, make sure it looks good mirrored. Um, for this one, I was not confident in myself whatsoever, in my ability. So I drew on a grid for the first little bit, and I had a grid over the reference, and that helps a little bit. Just get all your lines intersecting at the right place. Um, so I move on to the second big step of the process of those three that I was talking about before. And here I'm just, I'm doing lines, man. You know, um, gotta make sure everything looks good. You wanna avoid tangents, and by tangents I mean, like if a piece of hair curls, you don't want it like touching the cheek, you either want it in front or behind. Um, same thing with all your other shapes. Like, they either intersect or they don't. You don't want them touching, cause that's gonna, that's gonna look weird and it's hard to paint and then it's just kind of unnatural. That's that's the one one of the few liberties you get where if something looks weird in real life you can make it look better in your drawing. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going through and I'm putting lines on everything here. Hair is fun, you gotta be really smooth with it. So yeah. So step two of our process is painting, as you may have noticed by the abrupt shift. The software has changed. I am now in Paint Tool Sci instead of Photoshop because it's really simple and I didn't want to learn a new program when I started painting and it does everything it needs to. Anyways, uh, I zoom through the background real quick. Basically everything in painting starts with a flat color and then you put shadows on it and you, you modify hue and stuff because shadows are bluer depending on your lighting, of course, but that is usually a fact. Um, and yeah, so you, you just fine tune it until it looks good. You can put more blending on your brush to make it have smaller changes every time you make an action, or you can have less, and then the color that is on your brush becomes more abrupt compared to what's already there. Um, so yeah. I then started the face, again flat color, and layer masks. Layer masks are your friend. Layer masks are the only thing you need in life when you're painting, because who wants to stay inside the lines when you don't have to? So yeah, um, when his face turned blue there for a second, a while ago, that was me creating a layer mask. If you look to the right side, um, where it says layer 5, you can see a black and white outline. That is the area in which I am confined. It won't let me draw outside of there because I'll just make a new layer once I'm done with the face. But anyways, um, faces are fun to draw. There's a lot more colors going on than you think. Um, there's lots of pinks. Uh, areas around the eyes, mouth, and nose are all red. Um, 
if you have lighting then you get some green and uh, highlights are always going to be a little more desaturated but they can also have a lot of a lot of vibrance and a lot of different colors going on so yeah you just work through it find things make it look good put all the colors where the colors are at that's about it So after painting the face, we gotta move on to hair. Um, it did turn blue again, yes, I made another layer mask. Uh, because when you have a bunch of layers, you going to make sure, because if you end up with an overlap and you try erasing it, you're not gonna know what layer it's on. So why not just eliminate the need for overlaps anyways? Um, so we start with a few different base, like flat colors for the hair, because I want it to look round, because his head is round. So, you know, you create shape with different different colors. Um, so it's a little lighter towards the edges because it's closer to the light. And then the part that's like facing the camera that's right in front uh, is darker. And it just helps out once you start doing all the details. Then I move on to lights. I make a screen um, blending mode layer and just make sure that any stroke I do lightens it so I'm not having any weird color issues. And I use a brush. It's got sort of lines in it, but not really. You're just defining big clumps and you make it look how it's supposed to. And then afterwards you put strings um, to just define the shape a little better so you understand the direction and all that. You gotta make sure to use a bunch of different colors and tones and stuff depending on light source because that's what's communicating where the light source is and how it interacts with the rest of him. So yeah, now I'm doing just a few a few more layers. You gotta do a bunch for it to look normal. Some shadows too to darken it up where it's supposed to. I blend it in a little better. And now some strings towards the edges just to give it some detail and shape. That's about it for hair. Um, I then move on to its shirt after doing this shadow, uh, which is just multiply blending mode and some blue. Um, and then I do a shirt, which is relatively simple, basically just flat color, a few shadows, a few lights, it doesn't have to be anything complicated. And yeah, that's, that's how you finish a drawing. 